Hi, I'm Jason Wishart, Biosecurity Manager with the Established Invasive Animals Team at Agriculture Victoria. In this video, we'll take a look at canid pest ejectors and how they can be used to manage foxes on your land. Canid pest ejectors and baiting, which are covered in another video, are considered as primary fox management techniques and should be used with other suitable techniques as part of an integrated fox management program. Canid pest ejectors are a spring activated device used to deploy toxin directly into the mouths of foxes and wild dogs. They are activated when a fox or wild dog pulls firmly on the lure head. Canid pest ejectors can be effective at preventing harm to non-target species as they are specifically designed to target foxes and wild dogs. You can either use 1080 or PAP toxic capsules in CPEs and the capsules themselves are weatherproof which prevents degradation. CPEs also prevent caching, which sometimes happens with traditional baiting. There are a number of legal requirements that landholders must adhere to when using CPEs. First, you must possess a 1080 and PAP endorsed agricultural chemical users permit to buy and use canid pest ejectors. Any usage, notification, transport, storage and disposal must also be carried out in accordance with the label, the directions for use of 1080 and PAP bait products in Victoria and any other relevant state legislation. Okay, in this part of the video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set a canid pest ejector. So the first thing you're going to do when you're implementing a canid pest ejector program is think about the timing. So you want to place them out in the landscape when foxes are more likely to find it and actually pull on the lure head. So best to do it when alternate feed is scarce. Um, another time is when maybe younger foxes are dispersing from their initial home ranges, sort of after the breeding season. And with canid pest ejectors as well, it's also good to sometimes run a program in between your ground baiting programs to pick up any foxes that may move in from outside areas. Okay, the next thing you want to think about is site selection. So whereabouts in the landscape that you want to place the canid pest ejector. And you want to do that where foxes are likely to find it. So anywhere where foxes frequent an area for, for whatever reason. So it could be near a dam or something where their prey items are abundant, could be along a game trail, could be along fence lines, uh, could be near den sites and those sorts of things. Um, the other thing you want to be a little bit careful of or be careful of is, is potential non-target uh, species in the area. So if there's, there's a high sign of non-targets, you may not want to put your canid pest ejector there. So in this particular instance, we've chosen this spot near this old hollow log that foxes would um, camp in throughout the day. There's also a fair bit of sign as well that they've been here. So bits of uh, rabbit bone and that sort of thing and some scats too. So that's why we've selected this spot. Okay, now I'm gonna run through some of the equipment that you'll need to set your canid pest ejector. First, you'll need your shovel to clear a plot. So you wanna create about a one by one meter squared plot. Um, essentially that'll attract the foxes into the location, but you can also monitor footprints and everything left by foxes and non-target species. And your canid pest ejector will sit directly in the middle of that plot. So then you'll need your hammer to hammer the canid pest ejector into the ground. A driving rod, which will slip into the stake for the canid pest ejector. Now it's really important that you use the driving rod to hammer the stake into the ground or you'll damage the actual um, stake itself if you just hammer the stake directly. So using that. The next bit is the, the firing mechanism or the ejector unit itself. The lure head, which attracts the foxes to the site in the first place. Uh, the setting pliers, your safety equipment, so PVC gloves and goggles as well when using handling the live unit. Um, with 1080, you'll, these are the equipment that you'll need, but when you're using PAP, you'll also need uh, cotton overalls button to the neck and to the wrist. I'll just show you the capsule as well and what that looks like. Um, but when doing that, the capsule is the part or the piece that holds the toxin, so I'll use my gloves for that. So these are the little capsules that you'll use, and that contains, like I said before, either 1080 or PAP. 
And then your marking tape for marking the location. You might also use a GPS as well or something like that. And your remote camera, if you've got one, really great to put those on your Canid Pest Ejector to monitor what comes in and what might pull on the lure head. So that's all the equipment that you'll need. And the next bit, I'll actually set the Canid Pest Ejector. Okay, so now I'm gonna set the Canid Pest Ejector. So the first thing you wanna do is create your plot about one by one metered squared. So scrape it off a bit. So I'm just gonna loosen that soil a bit too, just so it's easy to see any footprints. Okay, so now that's all clear. I'll put the canid pest ejector in the center of this plot. So the first bit is to put the, the um, stake into the ground with your driving rod and your hammer. As mentioned earlier, it's really important to use the driving rod or uh, you'll damage the stake. Now you don't want to hammer that all the way into the ground, you want to leave about a centimetre or so just protruding so that um, you've got the locking mechanism there, or the locking ring, and a little groove in the side of the stake that you slot the, the ejector into. Um, that needs to be just sitting above the ground a bit. So I'll just go a little bit more. So that's about it there, just like that. Then we'll move on to the uh, firing mechanism or the ejector mechanism and setting that. So really what you do here is use your setting pliers and compress the piston and just wiggle that trigger a bit until it's at about 90 degrees. And that there is, is set or loaded, then set that to the side. And next, we're going to be handling the, the toxin, so we want to wear our safety gear. So I'll put my goggles on first. And then me, my gloves, PVC gloves. So next, you get your lure head and toxin capsule. And that just goes in the center of the, the lure head. And it can only go one way, so if it doesn't work, um, just turn it around and try the other way. And that should drop directly into the middle of that lure head like that. And then you screw that onto the ejector mechanism. So it's really important when doing this, because it'll be loaded then, that you've got your safety gear on, um, but also that the ejector device itself is downwind. Um, so that if it accidentally fires, any, any of the contents from the capsule will, will blow away from you. And also just to point it in a safe direction as well. So you screw that on, just finger tight, like so. And then that just slots into the stake that you've put into the ground before. So this is an important bit. So you want to put your head down low and to the side. And again, the wind is blowing that way. So if it accidentally fires, it's going to go away from me. The trigger here goes into that little slot there on the stake. And then that locking ring goes above the trigger. If it goes below the trigger, the, eje the ejector unit can just be pulled out like that. So it must go above that trigger. So then when a fox pulls at that certain pull force, um, it will fire directly into its mouth. So we'll lock that in position. You can see there that locking ring is above the, uh, the trigger. And that is essentially ready to go. So now that that's all set up, uh, we can then put our marking tape up on the on the log here behind us or wherever so you can find easily find your stake and you can set up your remote camera
The next thing you want to do is, is check it on a relatively regular basis. So every few days you'd come out and check it. Um, and that's to see if any of the capsules have, or any of the, the lure heads have been pulled and you need to replace any spent capsules. Uh, you may even need to replace the lure head from time to time because occasionally they do degrade a little bit in the weather and become less attractive to foxes. So you might want to freshen those up. Um, and then at the end of the program as well, you want to collect all spent and unspent cart, uh, capsules and dispose of them and dispose of any fox carcasses that you might find. And remember, as always, any disposal, usage, notification to neighbours, transportation, storage, those sorts of things, they must all be done in accordance with the label or the product label, and also with the directions for use of 1080 and PAP bait products in Victoria. Tainted pest ejectors are an effective method for managing fox populations on your property. As always, canid pest ejectors should be used with other techniques as part of an integrated approach. We hope you found this video on canid pest ejectors helpful and please view the other videos in the series for further information on fox management. Thank you.